what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I am going to be showing you the latest Havoc OS on this device. This ROM I have been using for a couple of days now and this as you can see is the 16th August 2020 build and I have flashed the GAPS version there is also a vanilla version which is about 614 MB and the GAPS build is like 1.2 GB and if you want to flash this ROM you can watch this video from the cards right here and if you are flashing this ROM make sure you are on the latest 12.0.2 MIUI vendor I will put the link for that in the description box below too so do not worry and now let me show you the about section quickly here is how the about section of the Havoc OS looks like let me just disable the dark theme so that you guys can see it better ok so on top we have the Havoc OS logo and the android version is still of course 10 and the Havoc OS version says 3.8 the security patch is latest of August 5th, 2020 and the build date again is 16th August 2020 build. The stock kernel is perf G kernel. Let me head back to the system panel. We still do not have any system updater yet and in the front camera sound effects you can of course enable or disable between these many sound effects or you can just have it disabled and we have the camera LED option of course. Now we have the Google keyboard as the default keyboard here in the G apps version and let me show you the stock camera here is the old kind of cyanogen mod or snapdragon camera here so you won't like like it most of the time so i have flashed the anx camera version 184 i guess and this actually has been working totally fine with all the lenses and stuff so that is not a problem as you can see why switching between lenses is pretty much fine if you want to install this anx camera on your device you can click on the card right there I have also installed Google Camera 7 for this you can check the description and as you can see this is the Google Camera version 7.3 I guess by Yernix the version 2.1 I think and this is working totally fine I have changed some settings here so that is why I have like this night sight and stuff working totally fine even with front camera and stuff this should work you should not worry about the Google Camera here on this ROM. The stock launcher present on this ROM is the shady launcher as you can see and here let me go back in the gestures we will find the double tap to sleep and stuff then we have this swipe down for notifications swipe to like clear all notifications and stuff then we have this icon customizations and we have the grid option and inside app drawer this feature i like that there is an option to disable the app predictions so you can disable that and have like nothing like suggestions up top on the app drawer and swiping down anywhere on the home screen gets you to the notification panel swiping to the left gets you to this google's discover page and here swiping up of course gets you to the app drawer and the widgets and stuff is working totally fine and if you want to see the double tap to sleep anywhere and as you can see it is working totally fine and i have been using it with the screen of FOD. well i don't know why it did not unlock for once but most of the time the fingerprint scanner has been working totally fine let me show you the speed again and as you can see it unlocked let me try it again unlocked again now i will try with the lock screen unlocked now i will try with the right hand thumb lock screen unlocked now i am trying it with the night light turned on so let's try from the always on display or screen of FOD as you can see not unlocking from the screen of FOD clearly with the left thumb it did unlock I don't know how it works but yeah as you can see it's not unlocking with my right hand thumb now it did with the always on display at least well, let's see from the lock screen itself not unlocking still not unlocking so yeah with night light turned on it is a really like, weird experience Let's try with the left hand thumb, it still unlocks. So I don't know what's up with my right hand thumb with night light turned on. So yeah, that's how the fingerprint scanner is over here. So this brightness problem is there, which I have been noticing. I just turned up the ISO just to like show you guys. Don't worry, I'll change it later. Here, if I double tap anywhere on the home screen and use the fingerprint scanner to unlock your device, and as you can see, the brightness still stays same. But if I use the status bar double tap to sleep over here and like if I tap the finger planner just like this and as you can see it turned up the brightness to 100% so that is a like really weird experience which I have over here and let me talk about one more problem that I have faced since I am talking about the problems here well for calls and stuff I was using a wired headset of course with the 3.5 headphone jack and when I plugged it out right away I opened YouTube and played some videos and stuff 
then i saw like the music of the video was actually playing back through the earpiece not the actual speaker that was a really weird bug i have never seen this bug on the like device with any other rom so that i have seen i heard it like with most roms it's hap it was happening with redmi note 7 pro right now it is like happening with the redmi k20 pro 2 so that is kind of weird with these like some roms and stuff so yeah that's how it is let me just go into the settings and have a quiz was always about customizations this is not different in the configuration center you will find all the customizations here we have the status bar and stuff then brightness control double tap to sleep everything is there so you can adjust the brightness just by sliding a finger on the status bar as you can see then we have the network speed carrier label and stuff icon style is there this is for the battery icon and we have this portrait circle dotted circle filled circle text or hidden we do not have the like large kind of circle we have the battery percentage changing option the position of it to next to the icon or inside the icon then we have the status bar icons so from here you can enable this headset bluetooth etc icons or volte icons over here then we have this small mobile data type icon and stuff then 4g icon is there bluetooth battery stats and notification count option is there inside quick settings we have the quick pull down to like right or left you can choose that then we have the smart pull down to battery estimates in the quick setting panel is there background opacity is there background blur is there if you want to customize that and we have this header image option too you can pick up a header image and turn it on and column and row number customization for the quick settings panel are there haptic feedback while tapping on the quick toggles are there auto brightness and settings icon then edit icon is there for the quick settings panel in the lock screen we do have double tap to sleep pocket detection is there if you want to turn it on you can do that screen of fod or screen of fingerprint scanner i just showed you is actually working fine not a problem and here we have the recognizing animation and stuff but all the problems that i have shown you in this video actually did not happen in my daily usage let me tell you that and the fingerprint scanner actually worked perfectly fine when i was using it on my daily usage and one thing that i got to mention over here is that we still have this recognizing animation and stuff but this is just one animation which happens by default and you cannot ch simply change that animation or you cannot change the fingerprint like icon over here like you find in evolution x and stuff those kind of things are just simply missing from here so if you're someone who do not changes the fingerprint scanner icons or the animations and stuff you are fine with this have a quiz and we have the authentication vibration and stuff but let me tell you there is no always unlock with the fingerprint scanner option which is kind of disappointing for me but yeah i would love to see those kind of features in most troms and charging info and stuff does show up on the lock screen and it is working fine with 18 watt fast charging in the ambient display we have the always on display and stuff you can turn it on you can even change the always on display brightness from here so that is really cool here we have the buttons and navigations and navigation bar and stuff is there and inside system navigation gestures we have the settings of it and from here you can change the length of this nav bar but you cannot simply change the thickness like other roms and we have the two button and three button navigation over here then arrow keys is there power menu customization is there where we will find the advanced reboot so of course in the power menu we do get the advanced reboot and from here you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot let me go back we have the screen of torch so long press for toggle torch is there and for volume buttons we have the swap keys wake device etc this is how the volume panel looks like by the way and you can expand it just like this as you can see so yeah pretty cool you can expand it anywhere anytime so that is really good we have the arrow animation then long swipe action and long swipe type and stuff you can change that and you can of course set custom actions from from this like long right swipe and long left swipe so that is really cool you can set a custom action like take a screenshot or something while you are doing a long left swipe so that is really cool and haptic feedback while doing that is there and let me go back we have the gestures here we have the system navigation gestures again for some reason and swipe to take screenshot is there so let me show you this is the oxygen os kind of screenshot where you will get the share edit and scrolling and delete option inside notifications we have the charging led blink for incoming call then edge lighting option is there and you can of course change the edge lighting color to accent or custom color if you would like from here and this edge lighting does work super fine not a problem then we have the heads up notification disabling option notification ticker then force close notification kill app button noise and notification etc options are there and we have some battery saving and then screen padding and stuff if you want to have those and force higher aspect ratio is there then we have the animations and here we have the whole ui animation of course quick setting toggle animation is there to flip or rotate you can customize that 
then we have the media settings this is for ringtone focus mode or something so that's how it works and music visualizer and stuff is there adaptive playback is there then we have the miscellaneous stuff where you get the screenshot type changing option to full or partial and gaming mode is there if you want to like use that then wake device and stuff is there you can disable that charging animation does appear and we have some condition cards and suggestion cards and inside about you get the developers name and stuff developers info and you can donate to the developer straight from here so i would recommend you do that if you really like the rom in the battery settings we have this kind of like look on the battery settings and on the bottom we do not get those charging cycle and stuff so that is a bummer and here we have the battery temperature option screen on time is there and last full charge and stuff and as you can see from the screenshot the battery life has been really great over here not a problem you can definitely get 7 plus hours of screen on time with this like rom and 18 watt fast charging does work super fine that is not a problem you can see the full usage just from here so that is very cool and smart charging battery saver and stuff is there now let's just go into the display settings we have the brightness level then adaptive or auto brightness option then night light and dark theme you can schedule that inside styles and wallpapers this is how it looks let me add a custom theme and from here you can change the accent colors just like this so as you can see plethora of accent colors you can get and you can set a accent color and like set a theme and you can apply that to use that accent color so that is really cool in the clock settings we have these much clocks and as you can see plethora of clocks option are there now inside wallpapers we have this on device wallpaper as the default wallpaper over here let me go back we also have some live wallpapers here that is a good thing that you do not have to like download them they are like pre-downloaded over here you just have to set them so yeah these live wallpapers you get by default and lock screen timeout and the screen timeout both are there so like if you want to stare at the lock screen for 30 minutes you can do that for some reason and we have the rotation settings up to 180 degree to 70 degree everything is there then we have the colors and stuff boosted and font size display size everything is there inside lock screen display we have some settings over here and there is the always on stuff double tap to wake is there so that is working fine and then we have the dc dimming or anti flicker mode inside sound settings let me show you we do have the me audio dirac and you can choose this to u edition and stuff and the sound output via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is great over here not a problem with the sound quality but yeah that sound bug which i mentioned was there for once at least i faced that and here you can disable the screenshot sound touch vibration touch sounds charging sound charging vibration screen locking sound etc then we have the vibration and haptics and from here you can have this in call vibration vibrate for calls vibrate for notifications and you can change the ringtone vibration pattern from here now inside security we do have the fingerprint and face unlock option now let me set up the face unlock now let me just double tap on the screen to use the face unlock okay so i have to swipe up i guess and then it unlocks let me try it again okay so you do have to swipe up then only it will unlock well i don't know why the camera is up there again what's happening dude okay so right now it went down but for some moment the camera was up there and you do have the option to disable this swipe to unlock thing so if i disable that now if i try that face unlock so it pops out the front camera as soon as i double tap to wake and as you can see i do not have to swipe up just right now so this is very cool the face unlock works totally fine and here is how the quick settings panel looks like and as you can see we do have the screen record and fps counter i have added both and you can turn it on and as you can see the fps does show up on the top left just right here and that does show the fps in real time so not a problem here with the fps counter at least and in terms of screen recording as you can see this is how it looks like the interface of it you can set the bitrate up to 20 mbps then audio source you can change it to internal or microphone you can enable show touches and stuff this is not the oxygen West kind of screen recorder and you can edit and add bunch of more toggles from here and you can see the samples of these toggles of course we do have the screenshot then screen stabilization and stuff then we have some more app kind of thing i guess so yeah lot of quick toggles that you can add over here not a problem regarding quick toggles so we get screen record fps info both so i'm happy about it stock dialer here simply does not have call recording option so you have to keep that in mind this is a stock pixel dialer
Now, talking about the DRM info, well, it's still level 1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p, so that should not be an issue. And it passes the safety net test pretty easily, so you do not need to worry about using banking apps of this ROM, you can use those right out of the box. I did set up my Google Pay and it has been working totally fine. Now let's just open some of the apps and show you guys the app room speeds and the RAM management here. Now let's open all those apps from memory again and see if they are st still in memory. So yeah, seems like all the apps do stay in memory and in terms of daily driving performance and stuff, I never seen any app closing up from the memory or something. So yeah, the memory management is like very good over here, not a problem with the memory management or like app opening up speeds. You can just switch between apps just like this and they work pretty much fine everywhere. And if you want to see the benchmarks of this ROM, here are the benchmarks. So that's when it guys that wraps up this video pretty much. You can of course use this ROM as a really good customizable ROM. And of course you can like do gaming and stuff with this. And you can play PUBG on highest settings possible, HDR and extremes I guess. You do have all those options. You do not need to worry about Havoc OS's performance. Of course the performance is great. But there are a little bit of bugs here and there which I mentioned. So that's been it guys. Thank you so much for watching this video again. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.